Okay guys, I wanted to make a quick video on bolting up my LS engine to my NV3500 five-speed manual transmission. So this transmission is from a 1992 Chevy Silverado 2500. It was originally bolted up to a 350 Chevy small block. Now, if you get one from a uh, full-size truck like I did, the shifter location is further forward and the gears are a little different. If you get one for an S10, then the shifter location is going to be further back on the transmission. It actually lines up much better for this particular swap. This is not a big deal though. I'm going to cut this down and create a linkage and it'll be real easy and uh, I'll extend it back a little bit. So what I have here is a 2002 six liter LQ4 that came out of a uh, 2500 Chevy Silverado. And what you need to do to bolt your LS engine to your MV3500 is you need a 4.8 clutch and flywheel. I've seen several videos online and everybody's saying you need these exact part numbers. I literally just ordered a random 4.8 clutch and flywheel and it all bolts up and it all lines up just fine. So you don't need to go out and get a specific part number that's on a video and pay a whole bunch of extra. Uh, I saw one, uh, one guy showed a part number and the flywheel was like $200. That's craziness. <clears throat> so uh, I do budget swaps. Now you, you do want to try to do quality on some stuff, but uh, I'm not going to go overboard here. I do budget car swaps. I can't afford to spend $12,000 on an LS swap. So uh, you basically just need a 4.8 clutch and flywheel. Now the issue that I run into, anytime you are bolting a transmission that was originally bolted to a 350 Chevy small block, the bell housing is longer than that that would be bolted to the LS, like a 4L60, 4L80, uh, 6L80, any of that stuff. Uh, so because they do have a longer bell housing, you need to make up uh, that tolerance a little bit. So originally I had the factory throw out bearing, the factory uh, arm and slave cylinder all hooked up. I had this engine and transmission bolted together I was getting ready to drop it into my Jeep, and I'm like, you know what? I should probably test this clutch before I drop it in, make sure that it's gonna work properly. So I'm glad I did, I tested it, it did not disengage the clutch. And uh, so what I ended up doing was I took this fellow right here, which is just a guide tool for when you're installing your clutch, and I inserted it into the uh, clutch and then marked it exactly where it needs to be and then I matched it up to the shaft here and I found out pretty quickly that the throwout bearing was way too far back and it was almost fully extended before it even touched the pressure plate. So I've seen several videos with other people that LS swapped and used MV3500s. Nobody's mentioned anything about this, so I don't know why I'm experiencing something different than what they have uh, experienced or maybe they just haven't said anything. But uh, with a six liter LQ4 bolting up a NV3500 from a uh, 2500 Chevy truck, at least a 1992 model, it does not work. So <clears throat> it will bolt up fine, but the clutch will not disengage. So what I ended up doing was I got a hydraulic throwout bearing. This was a genius idea from uh, somebody else online doing a different swap. But I was like, heck, why wouldn't this work for mine? So basically what it does, it just eliminates uh, your throwout uh, or I'm sorry, throwout bearing, your standard throwout bearing. It eliminates your arm and your slave cylinder, and you literally just have a throwout bearing that runs off of your hydraulic reservoir on your clutch. So you have a bleeder line coming up, and then you have a standard line which goes over to your reservoir. Now, uh, the problem is, obviously they don't stick out far enough, so this particular one, and I will leave the part number for you guys in the comments, so that way uh, everybody's gonna ask, what's the part number on this? I'll leave that in the comments for you. But it does come with spacers, so you can space it out however far you need. So uh, I ended up needing six spacers, and that put me exactly where I needed to be, to where that throw out bearing is going to literally be almost against it. Not touching it, but very, very close. So I can't remember what the exact tolerance is supposed to be, but it, so many thousandths, but it's, it's right where it needs to be. Um, if something changes, when I get all this bled and everything's bolted in and I end up having to take it apart and put another spacer in or something, I'll let you know. But I'm pretty sure this is gonna be right on the money. Now, the issue I did run into, however, with this is in the instructions, it tells you that this needs to be at the two o'clock position. The reason is, is your bleeder line needs to be higher than where your incoming fluid is. Makes sense, right? Just like your brake system, 
your bleeders on the top of the wheel cylinder or a uh, brake caliper, uh, you got to have uh, got to have it to where air can uh, escape out the top because fluid's going to come in, you know, gravity, blah blah blah. So uh, at the two o'clock position, the only issue is those lines do not line up with anything. So I had two options. Option number one, I could route all these lines up in here and take it out where the original slave cylinder was. Uh, or option B, drill a couple holes in the bell housing. Option A is not an option for me because I don't want a chance, uh, you know, six months down the road, having to rip my engine and transmission back apart because the lines got rubbed by this big spinning mass in there. So uh, this bell housing is not going to have the integrity hurt at all by drilling a couple holes in it. I've drilled many holes in different bell housings from these old Chevy transmissions. Uh, this will not hurt the integrity of the bell housing, I promise. So uh, basically what I did was I just took a three-quarter hole saw and I drilled a hole right where each one of them were going to be. And once I did that, it was all fine and dandy except for your lines move with the hydraulic throw up bearing. Okay. So your lines, as you can see, have movement. So what I ended up doing was drilling a second hole right next to that one, and then I took a file and filed it smooth on the edges. So now, when your hydraulic throwout bearing moves back and forth, it's not rubbing on the bell housing. Okay? So that's how I ended up uh, situating everything. This fixed all of my clearance issues <clears throat> this puts everything where it needs to be. This bleeder line will just kind of hang over the side like this. Uh, this guy right here, what I ended up doing was it comes with some fittings. And again, I will leave the part number uh, for you folks on the comments. These fittings actually come with uh, that hydraulic throwout bearing. So uh, what I did was I took this little brass one and I drilled it out with a quarter inch drill bit and I got some quarter inch brake line. And then I found out you needed to go a little bit bigger than the brake line. So I can't remember what size drill bit it was, but it's the next one after quarter inch. <laughs> and so uh, I basically drilled it out and slid that fitting over the brake line after I uh, cut it. I went ahead and reflared the end and I threaded it into, into this adapter, which as I said, comes with the throwout bearing. So basically I have my three quarter inch, uh, or three quarter inch, I have my quarter inch line here, which will thread right into this line right here. Okay. And what I'm going to do on the Jeep end of it, on the factory line that comes down right here from your uh, reservoir, it is a quarter inch metal line, has a rubber hose made into it. Obviously we're not using uh, a slave sonar anymore. So all I'm gonna do is just cut this and uh, I'm going to take this quarter inch brake line and put a compression fitting from there to this one after I bend it. Now, uh, some people are not fans of compression fittings. I didn't used to be, but they have come a long ways. And actually, like here in Ohio where I'm at, they're legal to use uh, for brake lines now, um, actually on your brakes. But uh, I've used them many times and had zero issues uh, with them at all, not with leaking, failure, anything. So I 100% uh, I'm, I'm all about using it, especially for this situation. So that's how I'm setting it up. Um, all I did was basically order two stainless steel flexible bleeder hose lines and uh, kind of made my own get up there to get it up to the uh, uh, master, clutch master cylinder. So that will fix all your tolerance issues. There, um, that's all good. And then on the transmission part, I did put the factory uh, Jeep uh, lever and uh, I also put the factory Jeep bracket for the cable engagement for the transfer case. I am using a factory Chevy 241C transfer case, and all I did was just get a slip yoke for that to go in the rear. It takes a 310, or a 1310, I'm sorry, uh, standard 1310 U-joint. Uh, and uh, on the rear of the Jeep and on the front, I have just a standard U-joint setup, which uh, takes the 1310 U-joint as well. Um, I said U-joint setup, um, standard yoke that takes a 1310 U-joint. Because basically uh, the drive shaft, factory drive shaft is not usable uh, once you do these swaps here. Now I will leave some, uh, I will leave some information on this engine on another video. I know everybody's going to have a lot of questions on this. 
Uh, I've had people say, hey, this, uh, this six liter, it's gonna destroy that MV3500. So I've used these transmissions for other things in the past. Um, actually old 350s that were built and had strokers and everything else, and they held up great. Now, if you stick this Jeep in four wheel drive, it weighs like 5,000 pounds. If I stick this in four wheel drive and hold the accelerator to the floor and dump the clutch, that transmission is not gonna hold up to that. Or if I get on some rocks and hammer it and you know get about 60 mile an hour wheel speed, yeah, that's probably not gonna hold up, but that's not what I'm doing. This will be daily driven and uh, occasional off-road, and uh, I don't destroy or beat on my stuff. So uh, I've had transmissions, uh, little AX5s and Jeeps that people said go out with just a little flick of a wrist. And uh, I've had them behind uh, very powerful diesels. I've had them behind uh, built engines that were supercharged and never had an issue. So, I, well, let me take that back. I shouldn't say I've never had an issue, but uh, it, it lasts a long time before the issues, you know, come up. So um, that being said, I know that the MV3500 is not made to take the horsepower of a six liter, especially this one. It's got 799 head swap in that. But uh, this is going to run for a very long time. Uh, again, I don't destroy or beat on my stuff. So this is going to work great. If you guys have any questions, definitely drop me a comment. Um, you can subscribe if you want to see more on this. I'm going to be going over everything on this swap, what I'm doing here. And uh, I'll make some more videos on the engine as well, what all I've done to it, and uh, what all needs to be done to actually make this fit in that Jeep. The good thing is there's not going to be any cutting or welding at all. So it's, it's pretty awesome, actually. But I'll go over all the information in some other videos for you guys. Uh, subscribe or leave me a comment if you need anything. Thanks.